Hey guys, it's me again. <laughs> I haven't uploaded a video in a while, like three weeks. And um, this video is to kind of prove to you that I'm uh, not dead or anything, and that uh, I still want to put some stuff out to you. I've just been kind of busy. So what we're going to talk about is what's in front of me, and what's in front of me is a uh, D flip-flop. D flip-flop. Now what that is, is it's a memory cell that makes it so that whenever the, whatever the input is, it stores that input whenever the system gets clocked. So this is the clock here, and whenever an input is set to this torch, it'll change the output to whatever the input is. So you know, when I hit this button, you know, the output doesn't go to anything, it just stays powered off because the output is, I mean, ugh, the input is off. But meanwhile, if you turn this on and hit the button, it turns this on. Now you can do whatever you want with this lever, it doesn't really matter, because this is going to stay on until you clock the system again. See? And now it's off. This uh, design is a simple design from the wiki, and it's pretty uh, compact, one wide, not tileable, but you know, it's not too big of an issue. I mean, yeah. So let's kind of look, it's just a, a simple component. You have an RS NOR latch right here, that's what stores the data basically. But then you have this, and what this is basically is, um, hmm, you, you can't really call it an AND gate because whenever you hit this, it tries to toggle this but won't change it unless this is on. So I guess an IF gate in a way, yeah. Well, this part would be the IF gate, while this part is just a simple OR gate, or an inverted. Okay. So then, um, yeah, this is used in um, anything you want that's pretty much memory. Basically, a D flip-flop is the beginning of RAM, but once you want to get into RAM, you have to then uh, get into a little more complicated things. You have to also add like an AND gate on the end, whether or not you want to view or not, but that's something I might talk about at a later date. And in the meantime, I'm going to show you guys how to build this. Yes, yes. Alright, so first off, let's get the clock. So, this button is going to be where our input is to get clocked. So, you know, it could be a wire or whatever, you know, it's just whatever you make it to be, and it is getting dark. Dunk, dunk. So, you know, so yeah, like it doesn't have to be like on the block, it can just be right there, and then we put a torch here. That is going to be our inversion for the clock. Then, what we want on top of it nah, is going to be another torch. Another, and here is where we're gonna have the if part. So this is gonna be where the switch goes, like that. So now we've got the clock, the if part, and now we gotta add the rest of it, which is basically just an RS knowledge. So here comes that with a redstone torch right here. This torch, um, okay. So when we clock it. If this tor torch went there, it would turn this torch on, meaning that would power the block above it, which powers this redstone, and powers the RS NOR latch, which is going to be right here, which means that it turns it on, and that is why it uh, turns on, not because of this. Well, and that. that That's what keeps it on. So then we just put a block there, and a redstone dust right there, and that's it. This is a little stubby output, though, so you could just, you know, extend it. Hmm. So as you can see here, you know, I've got the redstone wire going in right there. You can do that, and it still works. You can turn that off now, you know, do whatever. Still is on. So, yeah. I know this was a short tutorial, but, you know, I'm not sure what to put out tutorial-wise. Yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys later.